Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for being here today. I'm so happy to have you. So in today's video, I'm here to talk to you all about prayer journaling. Like what is it, the benefits of doing this practice, and I will also talk to you about my routine that is currently still evolving. And just for context, in case you're curious as well, I am a follower of Yeshua. Now without further ado, let's begin. Prayer journal is a journal that contains your prayers, basically. So a prayer journal can be in the medium of a notebook, like this, or it can be in the medium of a binder like this, or it can be on your digital device. You can pray or journal using a certain system like the acronym ACTS, you can use prompts, or you can treat it more like a diary and just do some free flowing stream of consciousness writing. You can pray or journal daily, weekly, a few times a week. As you can tell, this is all up to you. For a few months, I actually pray or journal daily and it was intense. And ultimately I gave up that practice, that kind of style of journaling because um, towards the end of those few months, it became more of a chore than this prayer journaling practice really being an intentional thing for me to do. With that being said, I'm still trying to figure out a routine, a system that really works for me. So don't feel like you need to like force yourself into a regiment right away. Here are four benefits I have found in prayer journaling thus far. Clarity and specificity. Prayer journaling has helped me stay so focused on my prayers. So do you ever find yourself like praying, especially when you're tired, or you're getting sleepy, or you just woke up and um, you start praying and then lo and behold, you start drifting off onto like whatever. You could be thinking about what you're gonna have for breakfast or you could be thinking about some random hypothetical scenario. I don't know what goes in your head, but I'm sure you can relate. And and you feel bad about that. I feel bad about it because I'm like, ah, oh, I was praying. I don't know where I went and I really need to stay focused. With prayer journaling, because you're putting pen to paper, you can be so present in your prayers because you are really thinking about what you want to say, what you want to write. There is so much intention put in my journaling because of how specific I get as well. So with specificity, it really gives you this opportunity to realize how much there is that you can pray about. You don't want to treat your prayer practice as if it's just, just reciting a bunch of things that you need to say that you're grateful for without the heart or the spirit. You know, vulnerability and honesty. In prayer journaling, this is a place for you to be completely vulnerable and honest as prayer should be. In a way, prayer journaling is like keeping a diary. It's like every entry you make is like a letter you send to your heavenly father saying, you know, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm grateful for. This is what I'm thankful for. This is what I'm petitioning. And it's just getting stuff off your chest so you're not holding it in as if it's only up to you to deal with it yourself because it's not. And it's really important to be open and honest with Yahweh because out of anyone that you got to be open and honest with, it is him. And it just makes your relationship so much stronger. And I find that when I haven't prayed and I haven't prayed in full detail and I haven't really poured my heart out and what I need to get off my chest, my connection with him isn't as strong as it could be. And honestly, when you get specific, detailed, vulnerable in your prayer and you just be simply who you are as you are right now, you feel the sense of lightness, the sense of relief of like, oh, I got it out. Like, this is where I'm at. And I'm just gonna believe in you and trust you and believe you to help me, to carry me through this, to guide me by my right hand. And it really reminds me of um, Psalm 32. Let me pull it up. In Psalm 32 verse three, it says, when I kept silent, my bones became old through my groaning all the day. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My sap was turned into the droughts of summer, Silah. When you don't confess, when you're not in repentance, and when you don't come to your heavenly father and just brokenness and understanding your depravity and just being honest about like what you're struggling with and not putting up a front, there is that heaviness. Like there's someone pressing you. And when you, um, you know, confess and you repent and you just state where you're at, it says here in verse five, I acknowledged my sin to you and my crookedness I did not hide. I have said, I confess my transgressions to Yahweh and you forgave the crookedness of my sin, Selah. So I just wanna say, I am no 
Bible teacher. And that's just like my connection when I think of prayer and being honest in prayer. It reminds me of this psalm and those few verses. Honestly, just do your studying. Don't take my word for it. I just don't want to send the wrong information out there, but I hope in saying that it is encouraging for you. Tangibility. Prayer journaling is a tangible way for you to document and reflect on your spiritual journey and your relationship with Yahweh. You can literally flip through and look back on what you prayed about like a week ago, six months ago, if you've been prayer journaling for that long and see where you're at right now with your life. And you can also see like what prayers have been answered and what prayers have not been answered in the way you expected them to be answered. That's very important. Prayer journaling is so helpful for spiritual warfare because every time I show up to my desk to journal, especially on the days that, you know, it's tough and I feel so hard pressed already, when I show up to my desk, it's like arriving in my little but mighty war corner, if you will. I put on the full armor of Elohim as noted in Ephesians 6 because of what Shaul or Paul writes in Ephesians 6 12. It says, because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against authorities, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual matters of wickedness in the heavenlies. Prayer is such a powerful tool. It's not just used for supplication, for petitioning your wants and needs and desires, but it's waiting, you know, it's waiting on him. It's about asking asking what his will is over yours. It is a tool for thanksgiving and praise and perseverance and resilience and building the strength of what it means to be a follower. Prayer helps me hold fast in the truth, in his presence, in his promises. It helps ground me and remind me of who I am, like what my identity is, whom I belong to, as well as where I should be placing my focus on. Before we get into my routine and the supplies I use, I would like to drop a few gentle reminders for you, if you don't mind. Out of anything I say in this video, I pray that this is what you remember. There are many ways in keeping a prayer journal. What I'm showing you is what has worked for me for a period of time. It's still evolving, it's still changing, and so will your prayer journaling style. You might find that this is too much for you or it's not enough, so please take what resonates and leave out what doesn't. Ultimately, let the spirit guide you. It is not about the style of journaling you're doing or the props you use or how much you write because really, the spirit supersedes all of that. Your relationship with Yahweh is special and unique. And I think it's safe to say that your prayer journaling style or method is going to be special and unique as well. So please don't worry about subscribing to a certain method or style of journaling. I think as long as your prayers consist of true repentance, of confession, of thanksgiving and praise, and not just straight up petition, 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 then I think you're off to a great start. I really don't wanna come off as if I know how to pray and I know how to prayer journal because I have no authority to teach. And like I said, your prayer journaling style is gonna be so specific and unique to you. But what I'm seeing in scripture is that often when it comes to prayer, there is a lot of thanksgiving involved. There is a lot of praise involved. There is a lot of repentance and honesty involved. And there is petition as well. All in all, I think when you pray from a place of humility and vulnerability, not only will it be easier for you to speak to him, but to hear him as well. And also when it comes to prayer and prayer journaling, we got to do it in a way that's not us striving for perfection um, and it's not about us performing or performing to others especially because in Matthew chapter 6 verse 6 Yeshua says when you pray go into your room and having shut your door pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret shall reward you openly my prayer journal practice consists of four items and everything is linked in the description box below. First up is my prayer binder. This is from Muji and it's a B5 binder with two rings. Next are my pens. I use the Muji 0.7 millimeter one for headers, for dates, and the Muji 0.38 millimeter one is used for writing out the prayers. My Bible. This translation is called The Scriptures, or TS 2009. It's from the Institute for Scripture Research. I prefer this translation over other English translations of the Bible, and even though I have some th minor things I don't agree with with this translation, I don't think you're gonna find like the 
perfect, perfect translation out there just yet. But despite that, let me share with you what I really enjoy about the scriptures translation. Number one, the divine names are used in this Bible in its original Hebrew characters. So you're not going to see the Lord, you're not going to see Jesus, you're going to see Yahweh, you're going to see Yeshua. Number two, the order of this Bible is arranged according to the original order of the Hebrew scriptures. Number three, the original Hebrew names are restored in this Bible. So instead of seeing Moses, you see Moshe. Instead of seeing Jeremiah, you see Yirmiyahu. Instead of seeing John, you see Yohanan, etc, etc. And there are so many more perks and pros to this translation. But I gotta say, I really do enjoy the ESV translation, specifically their translation of the Old Testament. I'm aware that the ESV translation really does embrace a word-for-word -word or essentially literal translation philosophy. So I guess the ESV translators and scholars really relied on the original Greek and Hebrew texts. This is my prayer binder. It is very simple and minimalist. I just have here stamped out prayer journal as my title, as my cover page. And as you will see, I have used the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S. And um, I don't really use this format anymore because I have it already embedded in me. But if you are starting out and you wanna have some sort of blueprint or foundation or structure to your prayer journaling routine, I find that using an acronym can really help structure and ground you in what you can pray on besides just straight up petitioning and asking for what you want. Our Heavenly Father is not a genie in a bottle and we can't just get whatever we want because not whatever we want is good for us and is what's needed. Anyways, so A, it stands for adoration and we have here praising Yahweh for who he is. This section of the binder is where I just write down praise, really. Um, it helps to turn to a psalm to gather some insight and inspiration and realize there's so much to praise about and that's where I start off. The next part is C, which stands for confession. And here we have confession, humbly acknowledging your sins before Yahweh. So this section is very like a diary, I would say. It's where I just dump out whatever that's on my mind, that's like on my heart that I really need to say, whether it's something I've transgressed about or it's something that's been eating at me for a while and it's still not resolved. And I realize a lot of the time when things are not resolved or they're kind of bugging me, it's because I haven't prayed on it yet. And I've been trying to figure out a solution by myself on my own, which is, you know, not the best way to go at it, to be honest. So confession is where I just be open and honest and vulnerable and I just say, it how it is and just to get it out there and oftentimes when I am writing about what I'm trying to work through you realize you know where you are stumbling and where your weaknesses are and where you are at fault or where you have sinned or where you fall short and that is where you can also repent and realize your inadequacies and how much you need help and you need guidance. The third part of this acronym is T and it stands for Thanksgiving. So it says here, praising Yahweh for what he has done and expressing gratitude for it. Simple and easy, this is all about just giving thanks and expressing your gratitude. S stands for supplication, which is asking Yahweh to provide for your own needs and the needs of others. This is where you can write out and pray about what you need and whatever prayer requests you would like answered and you can also pray about other people and you can pray for other people that kind of thing what i like about the acronym acts and just walking through the whole process of the acronym is that you don't just jump straight into petition because if you were to go into prayer and just ask your father everything that you want you are asking in a totally different mindset and heart posture, if that makes sense. Whereas if you've taken the time to really take into consideration how much he has done for you, how gracious he is, how merciful he is, and how almighty he is, and like you've, you know, you've praised about him and you've thanked him and you take into consideration of what you're falling short of or what you're struggling through. And then when it comes to supplication, you get a better, clearer understanding of what you really need and what you hope you need. And ultimately you ask for guidance and what he knows that you need, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Ultimately, let the spirit lead you. Read scripture, see how others have prayed, see how Yeshua has taught you to pray in Matthew, and use that as a framework, as a blueprint, so that your prayers 
are like his because we are asked to not just love Yeshua but to imitate him, to walk as he has walked. And now this is a little bonus thing if you want to add a little something extra and you are just beginning your prayer journey or you just want to spice it up a little if you will. Um, I have day of the week prayers. If you are struggling to remember to pray for others, it could help to categorize certain days to pray about certain you know, topics. So on the second day you could pray about your family if you haven't prayed about them already. As you can tell, the categories are starting from like, you know, a smaller circle, a more um, intimate circle, and then it builds and builds and builds and builds. And you can do it that way. Um, that's just one example of a category you could do. Last but not least, I have one little section at the end here. I've just taken out the written pages because, you know, it's really private information. So it's just blank for now. But it says here, I have answered prayers. This is where I can jot down any prayer that I have written now that I've requested for an answer, praying and, you know, submitting to as well. And I've actually had the prayers answered. And like I said earlier, when I said that um, prayer journaling is a great way to have tangibility in your life. And so this is where you have that tangibility. You get to really see what prayers have been answered. And for someone who's going through a lot in their spiritual walk or, you know, they're really being just hard pressed and things are just so tough, it's great to turn to your prayer journal to look through all the prayers that Yahweh has answered for you already. And just to be reminded and to feel encouraged and to feel strengthened in knowing that your prayers are being answered. And so answered prayers is a great section to have in your prayer journal. And that is it. That is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching up to this point. If you're here with me right now, thank you so much. It was such a chatty video. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth, you know, conversation about prayer and prayer journaling. I hope you got some encouragement out of it and some ideas to inspire your own prayer journaling practice. Please let me know in the comments below what you do for prayer journaling, what your system is, if you have a method, if you use some prompts, or when do you prayer journal, how often you do it. I would love to know what you do yourself because that can always help me with my own practice. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please take care and stay safe. And don't forget to like and subscribe because that would really help the channel out. And yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye.